But having this video is kind of related to spurious regression. As you know, there's not just yearly data, but all sorts of data. Although yearly data is by far the most common type of time series data. But two other very common uh, types of time series data exist. And one would be monthly data. So data that was collected on a monthly basis. And then there's quarterly data. So data that was collected on a quarterly basis. <clears throat> so you have values collected January until up until December and in quarterly data you would have data that was collected from quarter run to quarter four. Okay, so this is the difference. Now, what is the advantage of using this type of data? Well, one very obvious advantage is that it increases the power of your model. Remember that the more observations you have, the smaller will be your standard errors. So in this way, you are more likely to get significant results. So for example, if you collect yearly data for 30 years, you'll have 30 observations. And that's not a lot, so you can't include a lot of variables in your model. But if you would collect monthly data uh, for 30 years, you would end up with 12 times 30 observations and that would be equal to 360 observations. Now that is something to work with. However, this comes for a price. By using monthly or quarterly data, you also introduce a new deterministic component and we call that seasonality. So you introduce seasonality in your uh, data. And uh, in many time series, um, there are uh, months with typically higher or lower values. So the most obvious type of seasonality is in data on unemployment. Historically, you have much more unemployed persons in winter uh, because constructions are not possible. So we have to include this dependence on time in our model, just as we have to deal with possible trends. And most trends can be eliminated by taking the difference. This, however, does not work for seasonality. For example, the difference in consumption spending will be pretty high in December because of Christmas. Um, well, we could take the uh, seasonal difference. So you could take the uh, seasonal difference. You could do that. But... Um, there's a more elegant way to account for seasonality in the context of regression. So let's take a simple example. Let's say we want to explain the uh, difference in the number of unemployed persons uh, at time t by the difference in labor costs at time t and time t minus one. So our equation would look like this. So you have the difference of the number of unemployed people at time t and you construct a model of 1 plus, plus b to 1 times the difference in labor costs at time t plus beta 2 times the difference in labor costs at time t minus 1 and some error term. Okay, now... Um, let's assume that we use monthly data for this. Okay, so we feed our model with monthly data. So we know that there are more unemployed people in winter, but our model actually does not incorporate this. Now, how can we do that? Well, um, we could introduce dummy variables for every month. So we could use what we call dummy variables, okay? So we could use dummy variables. Now, um, I guess you're not familiar with dummy variables, so I'll explain that for you. Well, what we do is we create, so for example, for monthly data, we create 11 new variables. Okay, so we create 11 new variables for our data. So 11 new variables. One variable would be equal to February, March, April, and so on, all the way until December. Okay, so we create 11 new variables. Now, what we do now is um, if an observation is drawn from February, then we would code this observation as one for the variable February and zero for all the other monthly variables, okay? The same if the um, variable was um, drawn from March, then we would code the variable March with one and all the others to zero. So basically what we do is we're just telling um, 
from what month the data was drawn. Okay, and we indicate this by a one for the month the observation was drawn from and a zero for all the other ends. So this is this is pretty straightforward. Um, now, now I hear you saying, what about January? Well, we always leave one factor out. So for example, if you would, would use quarterly data as another example, you would create three new dummy variables. One would be equal to quarter two, the other would be quarter three, and the other would be quarter four. So if an observation is drawn from quarter two, then we would code it in the following way. We would say one for the variable Q2 and zero for all the other. If the variable was drawn from Q3, then Q2 is equal to zero, Q3 is equal to one. So in this way, we would code how, um, uh, for, from which um, quarter our observation was drawn, okay? So this is how we would do that. Um, now, um, we do that because, or we leave one dummy variable out because what we need is we need a base um, category to compare it to. So you, you will understand what I mean when I use the uh, regression example. So we create, let's say we use monthly data and we create 11 new variables, okay? One for February, March, April, and so on, all the way down, down to December, and we code it in the, this specific way right here, okay? So we do that and now we include these dummy variables into our model. So our model would be pretty long because we would introduce 11 additional uh, explanatory variables. So our model would look like this. So the change or the difference in the number of unemployed person at time t is explained by alpha 1 plus alpha 2 times February plus alpha three times March, uh, plus alpha four times April, plus alpha five times May, plus alpha six times June, plus alpha seven times July, plus alpha eight times August, plus alpha nine times September, plus alpha 10 times October, plus alpha 11 times uh, November, plus alpha 12 times December. And now let's not forget our other explanatory variables. So beta one, times the difference in labor costs at time t plus beta 2 times the difference in labor costs at time t minus 1 and let's not forget our error term right there okay so this is our model now what does that mean so if the value, for example, you, you run the regression and you get the estimates for all the coefficients. And let's say the, um, um, yeah, let's say alpha two, the coefficient for February is equal to minus 300,000, okay? So this, this right here is equal to minus 300,000 then this means that the number of unemployed persons on average in February is um, 300,000, uh, is lower by 300,000 than in January. All else held constant. So we can expect that on average there will be 300,000 less unemployed people in February compared to January. Okay, so this is how to interpret the coefficients on the uh, monthly dummy variables. Um, so this is why we always leave out one factor. And in this case, it was January. We leave it out to use it as a base category to compare to. So if you would use uh, quarterly data, for example, you would ha have um, 
coefficients for Q2, Q3, and Q4. And then you would compare these estimates to the baseline category. Okay, so this is important. Always leave one uh, factor out. Now, as you can see, alpha has an effect on the constant, while beta has a continuous effect. And since interpretation in multiple regression is always ceteris paribus, um, we have avoided spurious regression by incorporating seasonality in our data. So this is pretty good. However, also keep in mind, and this is this is very, very important, the seasonality, well, it should be somewhat, um, um, well, yeah, it should stay the same. If, for example, uh, if, if you don't deflate your data, it could happen that um, the seasonality increases over time, and that is not good. So make sure that your seasonality stays the same over time, and if you incorporate the uh, seasonal dummy variables, then you get rid of the seasonality and you can actually interpret your uh, other regression equations well in a uh, sense that it yeah makes sense <laughs>